Hello Aquarius, welcome to Monarch Intuition and today I'm going to be doing your July mid-monthly check-in reading for you. So what do we need to know for the sign of Aquarius? What's going on for you? If you're new to my channel, what I like to do is I like to pull one major arcana to see the energy and then clarify with a different deck. So what major arcana needs to come out for the sign of Aquarius? What do we need to know for you? We have the Magician. Wow, your energy coming out. I think this is the card that I pulled for you last reading. So the Magician represents someone with extremely high knowledge in all things, okay? Because we can never be the magician, we can be, you know, lower level magicians, lower level witches, right? The magician is more of an ideology and a construct of someone who understands all forms of magic. Imagine, you know, Merlin the magician taking on an apprentice and then Merlin retiring and then that apprentice has all of the knowledge of Merlin plus his own studies behind him. So he has the idea and concept of every single thing. So when I see this magician, you have something within your life right here that you're very, very interested in and you wanna become the best of, of something. Because this is not the jack of all trades cards. This is the master of something within your life. Now you might not be able to master everything, but you could master something. For example, a doctor could be, because you know, a doctor is kind of like a magician. The magician is someone who's very, very skilled at something and that would be kind of like a doctor has to have a lot of schooling, right? And you have to understand that the magicians were actually known to be, uh, or the magi or witches and whatnot, they were doctors, they were healers, they were mathematicians, whatever, right? So think of a doctor who is like a very skilled neurosurgeon, like the best in the world, but he's still, you know, a regular physician. He still knows the whole, you know, the anatomy of a human being. He still knows all of these other things. He might not be, you know, the doctor, the best proctologist, or the best cardiologist, or the best, you know, pulmonologist, but he is the best neurologist, right? And that's kind of what you have to understand about the magician is that the magician would be a master of all of those things and all of the sciences. So I feel like right here, you're picking one avenue within your life and saying, I am mastering this to its fullest potential. So let's see, or maybe this is something that you need to do. Maybe you have a hobby and you're like, no, I'm gonna make this. I'm going to be the number one in this hobby. I'm going to be the best singer, the best news, or the best music writer, the best news reporter, whatever it is. I'm going to be the face of something, and whenever people think of it, they're going to think of me. I'm going to have statues and you know monuments erected to me because of this. So let's look at this energy. Why is the magician here for Aquarius? What do we need to know? So I'm going to be using the Revelations Tarot, and this deck does have reversals in it. So what do we need to know for the sign of Aquarius? We have the Queen of Swords in reverse, the Ten of Wands in reverse, and the Eight of Pentacles in reverse. So here's the thing. You're making excuses about something. Because the Queen of, Pen or the Queen of Swords, she is very skilled about something. However, she doesn't... And when she's in reverse, she's not using her intelligence to its highest potential. She's kind of stumped on a subject, right? The Ten of Wands is you looking at something thinking, gosh, that's a lot of work. I don't really want to do it. I'd rather just drop all the wands and not continue on with all of the wands. Sometimes that's actually very important, okay? Because you might have too many wands in the fire. Maybe you are the Queen of Wands saying right here, I can't do all of these different things that I want to do. I can't carry all these burdens. I can't be, you know, the best whatever, the best singer, but the best doctor plus this plus that. I have to just choose one thing and then work on it. Because what you're realizing with this Eight of Pentacles is that you cannot master something to its fullest potential with all of the other things involved. All right. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand about mastery in a situation is that you can't really just do one thing, you have to do all of them. For example, I'm going to use video games. I know a lot of people are not going to understand this, but I'm going to try to break it down as simply as possible. There are professional video game players out there. And there could be, say, 50 characters in this particular video game. A professional would have their main champion or game character or video game, whatever, that they like to play. However, to be a professional, you would have to play all of those characters to at least some level of proficiency. Most people who say they want to be professionals, but, you know, they only play one character, they don't know the intricacies of other things and why they're designed, right? 
And so that's what I'm seeing for you right here is that to be a professional, you do have to use all of these different things. However, you can still just pick one. You can still be a master of one thing and have interest in all these other things, kind of like that neurologist, right? Still has to know the body, still has to know, you know, all the different things about the body, but still can only be the master of neurology. All right, so let's look at this Queen of Swords. And that's what people don't understand about being a professional about anything is it's not just you seeking one thing, right? You have to know all of the other things that are behind it and then say, okay, well, I know everything, but I'm only going to do this one thing or maybe four things within my life. I can truly master these four things. That's not to say that I can't know and understand and have the experience because that's what a professional is. So we have the Knight of Cups and we have the Six of Swords. The Eight of Cups and the Devil and the Moon and the Queen of Swords. Yeah. So we're going from the Queen of Swords in reversed right here to the Queen of Swords upright over here. So what I'm seeing for you with this Knight of Cups and the Six of Swords is that you have to release the emotional things behind something, okay? It's all great and grand to have a dream, but at the same time, you have to understand when you have to be professional about something in your life, okay? And you know this. It's saying that maybe something within your life is not actually going to pan out for you the way that you want it to. Because in order for you to be a professional at something, you have to let other things go. For example, most of those video game players that I just mentioned play 15 hours a day. It is their job to know everything about the game. It is their job to be able to play at all ranks of the game, to be the highest ranking person, to be the most competitive person. And by doing that, that doesn't mean that they get to have a social life. That doesn't mean that they really get to, you know, have girlfriends or boyfriends. That means that they don't really get to, you know, go and do the things that they want to do. They're constantly, you know, on stream, which is like, you know, using a, a kind of like what I'm doing. You know, I'm streaming something for you. Not really streaming. This is a pre-recording, but you know what I mean. Going live. They're interacting with their audience. You know, that's the thing about this is it's not all fun in games. And that's what the Knight of Cups is, is he's more of a folly knight. He's someone who likes showmanship and art and all these other things, but he has to understand, or you have to understand, is that you have to critically think about what you wanna do, and if it's something that you truly desire, then you have to kinda of let everything else drop off, all right? The Eight of Cups in this devil energy is saying that you wanna walk away from something, you wanna walk away from addictions within your life. The things that are not going to actually help you achieve this goal, you're gonna to have to drop them. So it's kind of like, you know, wanting to go hang out with your friends on like a Friday night or like on a Saturday and, um, you know, having a very good relationship with these people, but also traveling and seeing the world. You know, a doctor has to focus and study. They can't have all of these other things behind them because it's a very, very intense program, right? And with this moon and this queen of swords, it's you piercing through all of the BS understanding that your work cannot be the best if it's filled with confusion within your life. All right, so you say you do want to be the best video game character or player in the world. It seems, you know, kind of ridiculous, and it can be. But then you say, all right, I'm making this my job. Or even like a tarot reader online, I'm making this my job. This is not my full-time job. Um, but if you wanted to make it your full-time job, you'd have to throw yourself into this. You would have to record every single day, multiple videos a day. You would have to do other things every single day, okay? You would have to have no other distractions within your life, right? Like some people can put out 12 videos every other day, and then there's me who makes six videos once every two weeks, or 12 videos once every two weeks, right? And I generally can't even get all of them on the same schedule. However, if I wanted to make this my full-time job, I would have to be able to put up like a proper schedule and do this every single day, right? And that's what this is telling you is it's like, all right, 
you want to have this thing, you want to be a professional at this, you want to make this your job, you want to have this business or whatever, then it, you have to throw yourself into this 100% and walk away from anything that's chaining you down. And it's hard to do. Maybe that's something that you're thinking of, but then you don't realize how hard it is. For the tarot readers, someone who I can connect with, if you're out there who's an Aquarius and reads tarot, you understand what I mean. It's a lot to put out these videos every single whatever, right? The Queen of Wands, the Nine of Wands, and the Star. Yeah, you have to go without. The Queen of Wands is kind of like leaving her throne to take care of things herself and putting herself into a burdensome situation. It's kind of like leaving the comfort of something to go and pursue something else your dream, your star, but also understanding that it's not going to be comfortable, right? That's what this is. You're leaving your comfort zone where all you, all your amenities are there to go and pursue this nine of wands, this dangerous situation to attain something, your star, right? And that's what this is. Understanding that it's not going to be comfortable. It's not going to be easy. You're not going to have a, you know, see the most amount of profits, the best turn of profits the first year, have everything grow the way that you want it to. Especially right now, if you're thinking about like quitting your job and say, I'm going to read tarot cards on the internet. I'm only using this because I do it, right? Unless you want to sit in front of a camera for at least eight hours a day, don't. All right? You might think, oh, I can pump out these videos like that. No, you can't. Like, it's very, very rare. When people start getting to like, you know, the 10,000 subscriber mark, that's easier for them, right? They start putting out every single day. They're like, okay, I'm going to leave these jobs over here. It's not putting all your eggs in one basket, right? You want to see results first. So if you do want to do something within your life, try to take it slowly. Don't just quit everything and try to throw yourself into something because you could get burned in the end. This is more like a warning message for those of you thinking about it. And for those of you who are doing this right here, but still have, you know, sub, uh, not subtractions, but not addictions, things that sidetrack you within your life, you're going to have to let those go. And if you want to see some type of results right here, okay, that's what the cards are telling me. If you want to see whatever you're doing right now grow exponentially, you have to let go of all these other things that are taking your time and attention from something. Four of Swords. Yeah, peace. You have to basically go into this recovery period. And when I talk about recovery period, it's this assessment. All right? An assessment period. What is actually useful for your life? There are three swords above him representing that, you know, he's been pure... Um, by these three swords from the previous card, the three of swords. Three of swords represents heartbreak. However, he has this fourth sword underneath him saying he can recover from this and go back into the battle. So maybe you need to take a reflective period for yourself to really think about this and say, all right, well, I don't need to have, you know, Netflix and Hulu and all these other things. I can, you know, save some money every month, put it aside. I don't have to, you know, go out to eat every single day, put this money to the side. I don't have to contact all these people. I don't have to go out to, you know, this bar, go hang out with these people. No, I'm just going to start saving my money, consolidating my resources, putting it into every single thing that I do, having a plan and a goal in mind, and executing this properly. Yeah, the emperor. Because if you want to have the emperor status, you have to have a lot of planning. All right? Execution must be crucial for the emperor. If you want to be the boss of something, the CEO, if you want to rise up to the top, if you want to be the best of something in the world, it's easy to say, I want to be the best. But most people don't understand the best comes with heartbreak, setback, sadness. And if you're feeling that right now, understand that it's worth it. Especially, you know, as I said before, people who have to go to school for 10, 20 years, some people will have to. They're constantly in school. That's their goal, though. If you want to be the best, drive for it, right? Have that determination. There's a reason behind it. At the end of the day, you have to think about this for yourself, Aquarius. 
is it worth it for you? All right. Is being the best worth it? I kind of feel like that's where you're at right now. Because you're looking at things from a different perspective now thinking, I have to give up my friends or I've given up my friends. I've given up my social life. I've given up everything and I've thrown myself into something. They're happy. They might not be the best of something, but they're doing well for themselves. Do you want to be the person sitting on the throne all alone commanding everything? Or do you want to be someone who helps support the kingdom? That's where you're at, Aquarius. And if you want to be the person in control, well, that's going to require a lot of effort. Okay. okay. So if you're doing this already, then understand that it's for a higher purpose. We have brilliance and equanimity. Balancing out your uh, your brilliance right here. You're on the road to brilliance. It's, it's a very long, treacherous road, though. Okay? The Queen of Wands wants to receive the stars. Imagine if she could touch a star, but it was at the highest point in the world. And only she could do it. I don't know what mountain that would be. Mount Everest, whatever. I think there's one higher than that. But imagine, if you could touch the stars from Mount Everest and you could receive a wish, would you do it? A lot of people die climbing Mount Everest. A lot of people are too scared to climb Mount Everest. A lot of people get frostbite and, you know, hurt themselves. And it's not worth it to them even when they do complete Mount Everest. They have, you know, mental problems afterwards. Is it really worth it to get that wish at the end? That's up to you. I can't make that decision, but I'm letting you know. So let me get you a couple of spellcasting oracle cards. I'm being told to pull one more for you. Heal and shine. Okay, here's the thing. Even at the end of every night of you climbing Mount Everest, you still get to sleep, right? And assess how things went that day. Take care of your gear, right? Not everything is always on the road pushing through everything, sometimes you do have to rest. So maybe you will go into this resting period, have a nap for yourself, have a couple of days for yourself, and really truly think about where are you going next, okay? What's your next step? What's your next goal? What is going to happen the next day? Think about that, take some time for yourself. It's okay to take time for yourself to, you know, gather your thoughts. You have strength. And you have blessings. You're going to be blessed with strength. If you continue on this straight and narrow path for yourself, the angels will not let you fall. All right? But you have to continue on this straight and narrow path. You cannot have any distractions with it. All right? That's the thing where people get messed up is they start doing really well. They're like, oh my gosh, I see fruits of my labor. I'm going to tell people. I'm going to start celebrating. I'm going to, you know, count your chickens before they've hatched. Kill the golden goose to get the infinite supply of gold. It's not how that works, right? You still move in silence right here as well. Move in silence until you've attained the goal. Shh. Skull of light, illumination, hidden song, or night song, hidden talents. Illumination, you're going to receive the illumination that you seek. This is kind of representation of the sun card. Hidden talents with your night song. I feel like you're looking at all of your hidden talents. What's your hidden talent right here? If this is something that is inside of you right now, it's a talent that you have and you want to pursue it. Say you want to, you know how to play an instrument. And you're like, well, I want to get to Juilliard. It's a great dream to say you want to go to Juilliard. A lot of musicians. That was my dream when I was younger. I was like, oh, I want to go to Juilliard. Bro, they don't accept. They wouldn't take me. I practice for like maybe two hours, if that, a day. I usually practice for like an hour a day. I, like, you know... I wasn't going to sit down at the piano six hours a day and do that. Unfortunately, if you want, well, not unfortunately, but if you want to get into Juilliard, that's what you have to do. Like, that's it. Okay? So let me get you a couple of Witches Familiar cards. If you say you want to be the best, if you want to get into Harvard or Yale or Juilliard, if you're trying to become the best neurosurgeon, if you're trying to become the best athlete, blah, blah, blah. You have to throw yourself into it 100% and cut out any single thing that is a distraction for you. All right? You're being distracted from your work with the moonlight energy confusion. You have a lot of things going on. You have a lot of addictions within your life. And it doesn't have to be like, you know, 
a cocaine addiction, but it could be, you know, a video game addiction or, you know, the addiction of you always have to be around people. You're afraid to be alone. Some people cannot, per, er, some people cannot attain goals within their lives because they're afraid to be alone. I'm not saying that Aquarians are, but, you know, that's just an example. Goblin malice, elf mischief. Okay, and you have to be prepared to understand that there are going to be people who are jealous to try to knock you off the throne along the way, okay? There are always going to be, you know, demons put into your life who are going to say, oh yeah, come hang out with us. Oh, you don't have to do that. Oh, you know, it's fine. Especially, for example, if you want to, um, how can I say this? In certain government positions, in order to hold certain levels of security, you can't have ever done, you know, certain things within your life. Obviously, people lie about that. However, if you hold those things or if you're trying to apply for them, you can't do them. All right? You can't do crazy stuff. And a lot of times people are going to be like, oh, yeah, it's fine. Come on, do it. Do it. It's not going to, it's not a big deal. Just do it. If you want that for you then you have to give up everything else. Sometimes it's not worth it. The end. Uras, wild ox, strength, courage, determination, and opportunity. Spiritual meaning, initiation, life change, and destiny. This is part of your path, though, okay? But I'm just telling you, Aquarius, right now, there's going to be a lot of work for you to do. Take a couple of days to assess it, think about it. Okay, I'm ready now. And you go for it, but cut out all these things that are just distractions for you. One, Joe, joy and happiness, harmony and partnerships, positive family relations, and good teamwork, okay? So anyway, Aquarius, I hope you enjoyed this reading, and I'll talk to you later.